Hello, welcome to our podcast for chapter 10. And of course, chapter 10 is about the Americas. And as we start off to really get us getting started, we would love to explore some of the reasons as we see in our readings of the chapter of why the Americas were so important. And as we see in that pivotal event in the history of the Americas, we really have to recognize really the motives of why Europeans wanted to explore uh, the Americas. The, the European explorers, such as the Spanish, the French, English, and Dutch, all wanted a piece of the pie of the Americas. And especially Tia Chichelon, as we see in the beginning of the chapter, really, uh, as it's located in present-day Mexico City, of course, was an awe-inspiring city. Built on an island in the middle of Lake Texacoco, its foundations can be traced back to the 14th century. The Aztecs, also known as Mexica, and it migrated into the area and established their capital. Over time, Tenochtitlan grew into a grand metropolis, adorned with magnificent temples, bustling markets, and intricate canals. And so that really is something that we see that happens with that development of civilization in the Americas that really drew so many Europeans to the Americas, especially after the discovery in 1492. Especially in 1519, the Spanish explorer Hernán Cortés and his men arrived on the shores of Mexico, fueled by a combination of curiosity, their thirst for adventure, and the lure of potential wealth. Cortés, along with his Tlaxcalan allies, embarked on a quest to conquer the Aztec Empire, which was ruled by the formidable emperor Moctezuma II. Cortes and his fellow explorers, like many others during the era of European expansion, were driven by a desire to bring glory to their respective monarchs and accumulate wealth. The Spanish crown in particular saw the conquest of the new territories as a means to enrich the royal coffers and solidify Spanish status as a dominant global power. Thus, the Spanish explorers sought to report their exploits and claim territories in the name of the Spanish monarchy. And so that's what we really see that gets us started when we really introduce this idea of the Americas and why it's so important, especially for the Europeans. That allure of monetary gain played a significant role in the conquest of Tenochtitlan and other indigenous civilizations, the Aztecs, with their advanced agricultural practices, intricate trade networks, and vast reserves of gold, silver, and other precious resources presented an irresistible opportunity to the European conquerors. As Cortes and his forces ventured deeper into the heart of the Aztec Empire, they encountered the vast wealth and cultural splendor of Tenochtitlan. This lust for wealth and the desire for, to make a name for themselves drove many European powers to explore and colonize the Americas. And that really is why we really have such a great interest in the Americas at this particular time is because that is what opened up so much of that development and expansion because Europeans were lusting so much for the will. So now as we move forward in chapter 10, we want to go a little bit deeper on a journey to explore the rich and fascinating history of the Americas, especially before 1500. And as we go a little bit deeper, we would like to really show the vast and diverse continent it is important to note that this discussion in this chapter will commence in what is often referred to as the middle of this historical narrative. Scholars widely believe that the earliest migrations to the Americas occurred thousands of years ago, with people crossing the land bridge known as Beringia, which connected modern-day Siberia and Alaska. These early migrants eventually dispersed and settled in various regions across North and South America laying the foundations for the diverse indigenous cultures that would flourish in the Bolivia to come. However, while the Beringia migration is a crucial aspect of the peopling of the Americas, our focus today will shift to Mesoamerica, a region encompassing present-day Mexico and parts of Central America. Mesoamerica holds a unique place in the chronology of the Americas and is the first section where scholars have discovered evidence of large settlements, agriculture, and distinctive cultural traditions. The civilizations that emerged in Mesoamerica were characterized by remarkable achievements in agriculture, architecture, art, writing systems, and complex social structures. Among the most prominent cultures of Mesoamerica were the Olmec, Maya, Teotihuacan, Zapotec, Toltec, and of course, the Aztec, whose capital was discussed earlier, Tenochtitlan. 
Mesoamerican society developed sophisticated agricultural systems that allow the cultivation of staple crops such as maize, what we often refer to as corn, beans, and squash. Domestication of these crops was a significant achievement, providing a stable food supply that supported the growth of permanent settlements and the rise of complex societies. The Olmec civilization, which emerged around 1200 BCE, is considered one of the earliest Mesoamerican cultures. They established ceremonial centers with impressive stone, sculpt stone sculptures reflecting their religious and cultural practices. The Olmec greatly influenced subsequent civilizations in the region, particularly the Maya. The Maya civilization, known for its monumental architecture, intricate hieroglyphic writing system, and astronomical knowledge, flourished from approximately 2000 BCE to 1500 BCE. They built impressive cities with towering pyramids, palaces, and observatories. The Maya were skilled astronomers, as we've said, actually predicting celestial events and integrating through their religious and social practices. Teotihuacan, located near present-day Mexico City, was another influential Mesoamerican city. It reached its peak between 1st and 7th century CE, boasting monumental pyramids, vibrant murals, and highly organized urban layout. Teotihuacan influence, influence extended throughout Mesoamerica, leaving a lasting impact on subsequent cultures. The Aztec, who established their capital in Teotihuacan in the 14th century, were the last major civilization to dominate Mesoamerica before the arrival of the Europeans. They built a vast empire through military conquests and established a highly stratified society with a centralized government and complex religious practices and a tribute system that sustained their economy. By exploring Mesoamerica, we gain a deeper understanding of the rich tapestry of indigenous cultures that really flourished in the Americas before 1500. The civilizations laid the foundation for the development of a complex societies and left an indelible mark on history, art, and cultural heritage of that region. While the story of the Americas begins with the migration of people across Beringia, we have chosen to really get into this podcast a little bit deeper with Mesoamerican due to its distinction as the first region where scholars have found evidence of large settlements, agriculture, and unique cultural traditions. As we examine the civilization that thrived in Mesoamerica, we can appreciate the remarkable achievements of indigenous cultures and their lasting contribution to the history of the Americas. As we move forward during this time, many residents of Mesoamerica transitioned from a mobile hunter-gatherer lifestyle to a more sedentary way of life with a greater reliance on agriculture and settled communities. Prior to this formative period, Mesoamerica was populated by small bands of hunter-gatherers who moved in search of food and resources. These nomadic groups followed the seasonal availability of wild plants and animals, adapting their lifestyle to the natural cycles of the environment. However, with the advent of agriculture, particularly the cultivation of maize, we really see maize, beans, squash communities in Mesoamerica were able to establish settled villages and engage in more permanent forms of habitation. Agriculture provided a stable food supply that allowed for the development of larger, more permanent settlements. As agriculture became more prevalent, Mesoamerican communities began to cultivate crops and fields using techniques as, such as slash and burn agriculture. This involved clear land by cutting down vegetation, burning it, and then using the ashes as fertilizer. The agricultural practices were key to sustaining sedentary lifestyles and supporting growing population. The transition to sedentism brought about significant social and cultural change. With several communities, people could establish more complex structures, develop specialized labor roles, and engage in long-term planning for resource management. These developments paved the way for the emergence of a more complex political and economic system in later Mesoamerican civilization. It is very important to know that even as a sedentary communities emerge, some groups continue to engage in seasonal mobility. This was often due to the availability of different resources in different regions or the need to access specific environments for gathering or hunting purposes. However, overall, the trend towards sedentism 
and the establishment of permanent settlements was a significant hallmark of the formative period in Mesoamerica. Especially during this formative period, a shift occurred in Mesoamerican societies. From mobile, undergather lifestyles to sedentary settlements, the adoption of agriculture allowed for the establishment of permanent communities, leading to the development of a more complex social, economic, and political life. This transition set the stage for remarkable achievements that would unfold in Mesoamerica in centuries to come. During this time, many residents of Mesoamerica transitioned from this time of hunter-gatherers mobily to really a sedentary lifestyle. Two key advancements during this time was the domestication of crops and also the use of pottery vessels as storage. With the domestication of crops, surplus foods could be stored for future use. This is where the use of pottery vessels where storage became crucial. Pottery vessels were not only durable and convenient for storing food and perishable materials such as gourds or baskets, but they also allowed for better preservation and organization of resources. The advent of pottery enabled communities to accumulate and store surplus food, contributing to increased stability and the ability to support larger populations. The appearance of pottery in different regions of Mesoamerica during the formative period reflects, reflects the spread and adoption of the technology. Pottery production is known to have emerged on the Pacific coast of Chiapas, Highland Valleys, and the Gulf Coast between 1900 BC and 1750 BC. The use of pottery vessels for storage and cooking had a profound impact on food preparation, preservation, and the social dynamic dynamics within communities. The availability of domesticated crops and the use of pottery vessels for storage facilitate development of a more urban living patterns. Surpluses of food allowed communities to sustain larger populations and support the growth of settlements. With increased stability and surplus resources, specialized labor roles could emerge such as artisans, traders, and rulers contributed to the formation of complex societies and urban centers. As urban centers grew, other technological advancements such as the construction of elaborate architecture, development of trade networks, and the evolution of writing systems further enhanced the urbanization process. These advancements fostered cultural exchange, economic development, and the emergence of social hierarchies within urban communities. And so as we see, the domestication of crops and use of pottery for storage were crucial technological advancements during the formative period in Mesoamerica. These advancements provided a very stable food supply, allowed really for the surplus food storage and contribute to accelerated transition to urban living. The appearance of pottery in different regions reflected the spread and adoption of this technology fueling the growth of urban centers and the development of complex societies in America, in Mesoamerica especially. Now, as we move forward, we'd really like to discuss the Olmecs. The Olmecs played a significant role in shaping subsequent Mesoamerican cultures, but they were not the sole driving force behind the region's development. The Olmec civilization emerges around 1200 BCE and thrived about to approximately 400 BCE. They established a series of ceremonial centers in the Gulf Coast region of Mexico, notably at such sites as San Lorenzo, La Venta, and Tres Zapates. The Olmec are renowned for their colossal stone structures, including the iconic Olmec heads, which reflect their distinctive art style and religious practices. The Olmec civilization made significant advancements in various aspects of Mesoamerican culture, they developed a complex agricultural system, including terrace fields, irrigation, and drainage, which supported their growing population. The, Dome the Omecs also engaged in long-distance trade networks, exchanged goods such as obsidian, jade, and cacao with neighboring regions. Furthermore, the Omec played a crucial role in the development of Mesoamerican writing and calendrical systems. They created one of the earliest known writing systems in the Americas, consisting of hieroglyphic symbols. The Olmec also developed a sophisticated calendrical system that influenced subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. The Olmec's cultural, artistic, and technological advancements had a lasting impact on the region. 
Many subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations, including the Maya, Zapotec, and Aztec, were influenced by Olmec traditions, adopted certain aspects of their culture, and the Olmec can be seen as the mother culture or a foundational influence on later Mesoamerican civilization. It is important to recognize that the rapid development, however, during this time and progress in Mesoamerica during the formative period was not solely driven by the Olmecs. Other contemporary cultures and regions also made significant contributions to the region's development. For example, the Maya civilization, which thrived from around 2000 BCE to 1500 CE, developed independently in the lowland regions of Mesoamerica and made remarkable achievements in various fields, including agriculture, architecture, writing, and mathematics. And so as we discuss the Olmecs, they were one of the earliest and most influential, but they are not the only one. The Baya are a part of this group as well. And the impact of both the Olmec and the Maya, though not fully understood, is an area of ongoing research and scholarly debate. While the exact nature and extent of the influence are still being explored, it is widely recognized that the Olmec played a significant role in shaping the trajectory of Maya civilization. We know, as we discussed before, that the Olmec civilization predates the rise of the Maya and established several ceremonial centers in the Gulf Coast region of Mexico by the time that the Maya civilization began to emerge. The Olmec culture and artistic achievements, including their distinctive art style, were likely known to the Maya through trade, cultural interactions, or possibly even direct migration. One of the notable areas of Olmec influence on the Maya is the realm of art and iconography. The Olmec style, characterized by the betrayal of colossal heads and other scone sculptures, has been found in various Maya regions, indicating the diffusion of artistic motifs and possibly religious or political symbolism. The Maya incorporated and adapted these artistic elements into their own artistic traditions. Additionally, the Olmec may have had influence on the development of Maya writing system. The Maya script, which consists of hieroglyphic symbols, shows similarities to certain Olmec hieroglyphics. This suggests that Olmec may have played a role in the development of early adoption of writing among the Maya. Furthermore, the Olmec emphasis on ceremonial centers, complex religious practices, and social hierarchies likely influenced the Maya's own architectural and social development. The Maya built impressive cities with monumental architecture, including temples, palaces, and ball courts, reflecting their own distinct cultural and religious practices. And while the Olmec influence of the Maya is acknowledged, it is important to recognize that the Maya civilization developed its own unique characteristics and achievements. The Maya's rapid rise to sophistication can be attributed to the combination of factors, including their own ingenuity, resourcefulness, and the favorable environmental conditions in which they thrive. And so we cannot rule out the Olmec's influence of the Maya, although not still not fully understood, it is significant and can be seen in various aspects of Maya culture, including art, writing, architecture, and societal organization. The Olmec's cultural legacy likely contributed to the Maya's accelerated development, but the Maya also had their own independent contributions and achievements that propelled them to remarkable levels of sophistication. So as we move forward, let's start to talk about Tia Tijocan. Teotihuacan was a major pre-Columbian city located near present-day Mexico City. It reached its peak in about the 1st and 7th century CE and is considered one of the largest and most influential cities in the ancient world. Teotihuacan was characterized by impressive urban planning, monumental architecture, and cultural influence. The city featured iconic structures such as the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. These pyramids and temples showcase the city's architectural prowess and its religious significance. The urban layout of Teotihuacan was carefully planned with wide straight avenues and an organized grid pattern of residential complexes. 
The city had complex social structure with distinct neighborhoods, extensive trade networks, and a highly, and a highly organized government. Teotihuacan's influence extended beyond its immediate region. The city was a major center of trade with goods flowing in and out of various parts of Mesoamerica. Teotihuacan's cultural and artistic styles, including the distinctive, moral, the distinctive mural paintings, influenced subsequent civilizations in Mesoamerica, such as the Maya and the Zapotec. And as we move forward, let's start to really talk more about the Toltec. The Toltecs are also known for their military prowess, urban planning, and architectural achievements. They were skilled builders and constructed impressive structures as well, including the Pyramid of the Feather Serpent, which features intricate stone carvings depicting feathered serpents. The Toltecs' architecture at Tula exhibited influence from earlier civilizations such as Teotihuacan. The Toltec civilization also left a lasting impact on Mesoamerican culture through their mythology and religious beliefs. They worship the feathered serpent deity associated with learning, art, and wind. And the myth of that feathered serpent, along with other Toltec legends, became important elements of the later Aztec civilization. The Toltec also credited with disseminating knowledge and skills in various fields, including metallurgy, agriculture, and the arts. They had significant influence on neighboring regions. Teotihuacan and the Toltecs were very prominent civilizations in Mesoamerican history. Teotihuacan's urban planning, monumental architecture, and cultural influence left an indelible mark on subsequent civilizations, while the Toltecs' military prowess, architectural achievements, and religious practices influenced the development of Mesoamerican culture. Both civilizations played a crucial role in shaping the history and cultural heritage. Of Mesoamerica. Next, let's go a little bit deeper as we talk about the Aztec civilization, specifically the post classic Aztec Empire, which drew significant attention from the Spanish conquerors during their arrival in Mexico. The Aztecs, also known as the Mexica, established a powerful empire in the 14th and 15th century CE with their capital city located in Tenochtitlan, in present day Mexico City. The Aztec Empire was characterized by its complex political organization, extensive trade networks, monumental architecture, and vibrant cultural practices. The empire encompassed a large territory with its influence spreading across much of central Mexico. The Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés led the expedition that ultimately resulted in the conquest of the Aztec Empire. In 1519, Cortes arrived in Mexico and sought to exploit the wealth and resources of the region. The Aztec Empire, with its reputation for vast riches, drew its attention to the Spanish conquistadors, who saw potential monetary gain from their conquests. The Spanish initially formed alliances with indigenous groups that were enemies of the Aztec, such as the Tlaxcalans. With their support and the aid of superior weaponry, the Spanish were able to defeat the Aztec forces and ultimately conquer, conquer Tenochtitlan in 1521. The Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire had profound consequences for the region's history. It led to the dismantling of Aztec political and social structures, the imposition of Spanish colonial rule, and the introduction of Christianity in the Americas. The conquest also resulted in the widespread loss of indigenous lives, the destruction of cultural artifacts and monuments, and the disruption of traditional ways of life. Despite the conquest and subsequent colonization, the Aztec civilization left an lasting impact on Mexico's cultural heritage. Many aspects of the Aztec culture, such as art, language, religious practices, and agricultural techniques, continue to influence Mexican society today. The ruins of Tenochtitlan, now located beneath Mexico City, served as a reminder of the once mighty Aztec Empire and its rich history. The Aztec Empire, with its wealth, power, and cultural complexity, drew significant attention from the Spanish conquerors during their arrival in Mexico. The conquest of the Aztecs by the Spanish had far-reaching consequences for the region marking the beginning of Spanish colonial rule and profoundly altering the course of Mesoamerican history. And so as we move from 
the Aztecs, and the conquering by the Spanish, we start to really discuss also other areas of the Americas, especially the Pacific Coast. The Pacific Coast and the Andean culture of the Americas have left wealth and material culture that provides valuable insights for archaeologists and historians. The dry climate of certain regions, particularly the Andean highlands, has contributed to the preservation of artifacts, structures, and even human remains, allowing for a better understanding of these ancient civilizations. In the Andean region, civilizations such as the Inca, Moche, Nazca, and Chauvin have left remarkable material remains. The Inca, known for their vast empire of the 15th and 16th centuries, constructed impressive stone structures as the Machu Picchu, which continue to awe visitors today. The well-preserved ruins of these sites provide important insights into Inca architecture engineering techniques, and social organization. The Moche civilization, which thrived between the 1st and 8th century CE on the northern coast of Peru, left behind an extraordinary amount of material culture. Their elaborate pottery vessels depict intricate scenes of daily life, ceremonies, and mythical narratives providing valuable information about the cultural practices and belief. Similarly, the Nazca civilization, famous for its enigmatic Nazca lines, created intricate geoglyphs in the desert floor. These giant drawings of animals, plants, and geometric shapes, only visible from the air, offer insight in the Nazca worldview and their artistic expression. The Chauvin culture, dating back to around 900 BCE, produced impressive stone sculptures, intricate textiles, and complex architecture, structures at the size of Chauvin the Antar, these artifacts contribute to our understanding of their religious beliefs, iconography, and ceremonial practices. On the Pacific coast of South America, the ancient cultures left behind an abundance of pottery, textiles, metalwork, and architectural remains. The dry coastal climate has also preserved these artifacts remarkably well, allowing archaeologists to study and analyze them in detail. These artifacts provide valuable information about the cultural practices, trade networks, and artistic traditions of these civilizations. The study of material culture from the Pacific Coast and Andean cultures has significantly enhanced our understanding of ancient American civilizations. It has shed light on various aspects of their societies, including their technological advancements, economic systems, artistic expression, religious beliefs, and social structures. And so as we move forward, we can see that the Pacific Coast and Indian cultures of the Americas have left behind a wealth of material culture that has been preserved, in part due to the dry climate of the region. The analysis of these artifacts has greatly contributed to our knowledge of these ancient civilizations and has helped shape our understanding of the rich and diverse history of the Americas as well. And so as we move even further, we can now look forward to seeing the large platform mounds that really are part of the Norte Chico civilization. Those large platform mounds found in Norte Chico and later at the Highland Center at the Show Van Thar demonstrate a continuity of architectural features and cultural practices in ancient Peru. The Norte Chico civilization, also known as Carasupe civilization, emerges around 3000 BC along the northern coast of Peru. It is considered one of the earliest complex societies in the Americas. The civilization consists of several large settlements, including Carral, Esparo, and Supe. And one of the distinctive features of Norte Chico site is the presence of monumental platform mounds. These mounds were constructed by piling up layers of earth and stone, creating elevated platforms that serve various purposes, such as ceremonial administrative functions, the mounds at Caral, for instance, include the impressive Pyramid Mayar, or Main Pyramid, which is one of the largest structures at the site. Later, especially at the Chauvin d'Altar, we also find the presence of large platform mounds indicating a continuation of architectural practices from earlier civilizations like Norte Chico. The Chauvin site, monumental stone structures, including the Castillo, or Castle, and Templo Viejo, or Old Temple, which are constructed on elevated platforms. The significance of these platform mounds in both Norte Chico and Chauvin culture suggests a shared cultural tradition and perhaps the transfer of architectural knowledge 
or religious concepts from one region to another. These mounds serve as important ceremonial and social spaces, emphasizing the importance of ritual activities and communal gatherings within these ancient societies. Now, as we move forward, we like to further talk about the Chibu civilization, which emerged after the decline of the Moche culture, flourished along the northern coast of Peru from 9th to 15th century CE. The Chibu people built a highly organized and centralized state with Chan Chan as its capital. Chan Chan is an archaeological site located near the modern day city of Trujillo and is considered one of the largest adobe cities in the world, covering approximately 20 square kilometers or 7.7 square miles. The site consists of several walled compounds known as citadels or palaces, which are residents of the elite and ruling classes. The layout of Chan Chan reflects the Chimu's urban planning and architectural skills. The cities were divided into nine distinct citadels, each with its own ceremonial spaces, residential areas, and administra administrative structures. The citadels were interconnected by the networks of roads, canals, and plazas, showcasing the Chimu's advanced infrastructure. The Chimu was renowned for their master of adobe construction, the walls of Chan Chan were adorned with intricate and elaborate reliefs depicting various motifs such as animals, mythical creatures, and geometric patterns. These reliefs provided insights into Chimu art, culture, and religious beliefs. Despite their impressive achievements, the Chimu civilization eventually faced decline and was conquered by the Inca Empire in the late 15th century. The Incas incorporated elements of the Chimu culture into their own. But Chan Chan, lost its status as the political center of the, reading, of the region. Today, Chan Chan is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is important archaeological archaeology. Today, Chan Chan is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an important archaeological and historical attraction. Excavations and ongoing research continue to provide valuable insights into the Chimu civilization and its significance into the history of pre-Columbian pre-Columbian pre Peru. As we have somewhat been discussing all along through the last several chapters, we have discussed the Inca Empire and their conquests. The Inca Empire, under the leadership of Pachacuti, experienced significant expansion during its early years and managed to conquer various ethnic groups and territories in the Andean region including the Chanka, Kichachui, and Chimu. Pacacuti, also known as Pacacutec, became the knight ruler of the Inca state around 1438. Under his leadership, the Inca empire underwent a period of rapid expansion and consolidation. Pacacuti initiated a series of military campaigns that resulted in the conquest of neighboring regions. One of the notable conquests during Pachacuti's reign was that of the Chanca, an ethnic group located in the Southern Andes. The Chancas were a significant rival to the Inca and their defeat solidified the Inca's power in the region. With the uh, defeat of the Chancas, Pachacuti expanded his influence over the territories and incorporated them into the Inca empire. Furthermore, as we see, Pachacuti extended Incan Empire over the Caicas speaking people who inhabited a vast area in the southern Andes through military campaigns and strategic alliances. Pachacuri succeeded in subjugating the various Caicha ethnicities and integrating them into expanding the Inca Empire. A notable conquest of the Inca Empire on the Pachacuri's reign was the coastal Chibu civilization. The Chimu, as we've discussed before, were a powerful civilization along the northern coast of Peru with their capital at Chan Chan and with Pachacuti's very extensive military campaigns and political maneuvering, he was able to successfully conquer them and incorporate their territories and resources into his new Inca empire. These conquests not only expanded the territorial boundaries of the Inca empire, but also increased its wealth resources, and political influence. Pachacuti's military success laid the foundation for the subsequent expansion of the Inca Empire under his successors. Pachacuti's reign marked a significant 
turning point in Inca history. Establishing the Inca Empire as a dominant force in the Andean region, his conquest laid the groundwork for the Inca imperial ambitions and set the stage for further expansion and consolidation of that empire in the following decades. Pachacuti, the ruler of the Inca Empire with his massive military campaigns was very successful. That resulted in the conquest of various ethnic groups and territories, including the Chaca, Pachacuti, Chimu. These conquests expanded the Inca Empire's reach and solidified their power in the Andean region, paving the way for further expansion and establishment of one of the largest pre-Columbian empires of the Americas. So now, as we move a little bit further, let's go to the north. The formation of the Panamanian land bridge around two million years ago played a crucial role in shaping the biological and cultural diversity of the two American continents. Before the formation of the land bridge, North America and South America were isolated land masses with distinct ecosystems and species. The separation led to the evolution of unique plant and animal species in each region. For example, species like llamas, alpacas evolved in South America, while bison, bears, and wolves developed in North America. These distinct ecosystems and species composition influence the availability of resources and ecological niches for human populations. The migration of humans from Asia to the Americas is believed to have occurred primarily, as we said before, through the Bering Land Bridge, to appear to lower sea levels around 20,000 and 12,000 years ago. The separate development of North and South Americans, flora and fauna, meant that human populations, as they made their way over, encountered different environments, resources, and challenges. These contributed to the diversification of cultures and settlement patterns across the continents. In North America, various indigenous cultures developed complex societies, such as the Mississippian culture in the Southeast, the ancestral Puebloans in the Southwest, and the Iroquois Confederacy in the Northeast. These societies exhibit advanced agricultural practices, monumental structure, and social complexity. In South America, civilizations like the Inca, the Moche, Navaca, and Maya in Mesoamerica arose with sophisticated agricultural systems, monumental architecture, intricate cultural and social structures. These civilizations developed advanced agricultural techniques, including terrace farming, irrigation systems, and sophisticated crop management. Those two distinctive evolutionary paths really lay the groundwork of how these two distinctive cultures have developed. The, de the availability of these resources, ecological adaptions, and cultural practices played a significant role in shaping the diversity of indigenous cultures and their respective settlement patterns across the continents. It is important to really recognize the rich cultural heritage and diverse histories of the indigenous people in both North and South America, which are all shaped by millions of years of separate development and evolution. The, de the geological separation of North and South America until the formation of the Panamanian land bridge around two million years ago resulted in distinct biological and cultural developments in each region. This separation influenced the pace, patterns, and diversity of human settlements in Americas with unique ecosystems, resources, and cultural practice shaping each indigenous civilization that arose on both continents. Especially in North America, the introduction of maize, or what we often refer to as corn, beans, and squash from northern Mexico played a significant role in the transition to the sedentary culture in southwest region, or what is now the United States. The agricultural trios commonly referred to as the Three Sisters provide a reliable and sustainable food source and supported the development of several communities. The cultivation and consumption of maize, beans, and squash in the Southwest are believed to have started around 2000 BC. These crops offered several advantages that contribute to the transition from nomadic or semi-monadic lifestyles to sedentary settlements. 
maize with its high caloric value and versatility became a staple crop that provided a reliable food source. Its cultivation allowed for the production of surplus foods, which could be stored and used during periods of scarcity. Spay maize could be processed into various forms, such as grinding it into flour or cooking it as a nutritious food source. Beans, as well, when grown alongside maize, offered a complementary nutritional value. Beans are rich in protein, in which combined with maize created a balanced diet. They also help replenish the nitrogen content in the soil, enhancing the overall productivity of the agricultural system. Squash, with its vining nature, helps suppress weed growth and conserve soil moisture. Its large leaves provide shade, producing evaporation and helping to maintain soil moisture levels. Squash was also a valuable food source, providing vitamins and nutrients. And the cultivation of all three crops allowed communities in the Southwest to establish permanent settlements and transition from the hunter-gatherer lifestyle to one centered around agriculture. Centenary communities could focus on agricultural activities, leading to the development of more complex social and economic cultural systems. Also, with the introduction of a newer variety of maize known as maize de ocho, played a significant role in the flourishing of sedentary villages in the Southwest and the subsequent development of large pit house villages around 500 BC. Maize de Osho, also referred as the eight row maize, offered advantages that were better suited to the arid conditions of the region and facilitated the growth of agricultural communities. Maize de Ocho is characterized by larger kernels and eight rows of kernels on each cob, hence its name. These larger kernels were more easily milled, making the processing of maize more efficient for the communities. The improved milling process allowed the production of finer flour and enhanced the overall utilization of maize as a food source. The adaptability of maize de Ocho to arid conditions was crucial in the Southwest, but water resources were limited. The varieties of maize demonstrated better tolerance to drought and was more efficient in water utilization compared to earlier maize varieties. Its cultivation supported agricultural productivity in arid environments and helped sustain sedentary communities in regions where water scarcity was a significant concern. The availability of maize de Osho is a reliable and productive crop provided a stable food source that really enabled larger and more permanent settlements, especially in the American Southwest. With surplus food production, communities had the ability to support a greater population, leading to the formation of larger villages and the construction of more sustainable pit house structure. That appearance of larger pit house villages around 500 BC marked a significant transition in the social and cultural organization of the indigenous communities in the Southwest. These villages consisted of multiple interconnected pit houses, which served as dwelling storage spaces and communal areas. The presence of larger, more permanent settlements facilitated social interactions, trade networks, and the development of complex social and economic systems. It is very important for us to note in this podcast that the adoption and cultivation of maize ocho were not the sole factors responsible for these transformations. The development of sanitary villages and complex cultural complexity in the Southwest were the results of a complex interplay between environmental conditions, technological innovations, social interactions, and cultural practices. This crop is one of the many factors that really led to phenomenal growth especially in the Southwest, especially as it provided a reliable food source, enhanced agricultural productivity in an arid environment and contributed to the development of larger pit house villages and of course, larger civilizations to be able to populate and grow. And that really led to complex social systems. So let's move a little bit farther as we move into our chapter and talk about the Chaco phenomenon. The Chaco phenomenon re represents a significant cultural and architectural development in the ancient Puebloan civilization. The Chacoan culture, centered in Chaco Canyon, 
region of present-day New Mexico is known for its remarkable architectural achievements, including the construction of massive stone buildings known as the Great Pueblos. These pueblos were multi-storied constructions characterized by intricate masonry, large rooms, and interconnected passageways. The Great Pueblos found in Chaco Canyon, such as Pueblo Bonita and Chetro Catel, served as ceremonial, administrative, and social centers of the surrounding communities. These structures were not just dwellings, but also communal spaces that facilitated social gatherings, rituals, and economic activities. The Chacoan society demonstrated advanced engineering and architectural skills as they were able to construct these large scale buildings with precise alignments to celestial events. The strategic position of doorways and windows in relation to the movement of the sun and moon suggests an intimate connection between the Chacoans and astronomical observations. The Chacoan phenomenon also involved the construction of extensive road networks called Chaco Roads, which connected various Chacoan sites throughout the region. These roads served as trade routes and facilitated cultural exchange among different communities within the Chacoan society. The reason behind the rise and decline of the Chacoan culture and the purpose of the Great Pueblos continue to be a subject of scholarly debate even to this day. Some theories suggest that the Great Pueblos served as the centers of religious and ceremonial activities, while others propose that they represent symbols of political power and social hierarchy within the Chacoan society. And as we see the emergence of these Great Pueblo settlements as part of the Chaco phenomenon around 900, CE represents a notable development in the ancient Puebloan civilization and the Southwest. The construction of these massive stone structures along with the development of road networks highlights an architectural and social complexity of the Chacoan society. And so now we really want to discuss also the groups that lived along the Pacific coast of North America. Several of them continue to live a very sedentary culture that really thrive by relying on the rich abundance of the ocean resources surrounding them, rather than agriculture. These cultures develop sophisticated systems to exploit the diverse marine and terrestrial ecosystems of the coastal region, provided them with a diverse range of resources for sustenance and material needs. This Pacific Coast culture had access to a wealth of resources, included various fish species, sea mammals such as seals and sea lions, shellfish, waterfowl, game animals, wild plants, and timber from the surrounding forests. They developed advanced fishing techniques such as using nets, tarps, and hooks to catch fish and other marine species. They also employed skilled boat building techniques to navigate the coastal waters and engage in maritime activities. And with this, we see the utilization of ocean resources truly played a crucial role in the economies and cultural practice of these, culture, these coastal cultures. Fish and marine animals were not only important sources of food, but also provided materials for making tools, clothing, and other essential items. The collection of shellfish and other marine invertebrates was a significant activity providing a valuable source of protein and shell material for crafting ornaments, tools, and utensils. This reliance on ocean resources also shaped the social organization and cultural tradition of these coastal cultures. Coastal communities often form complex social structures with specialization in fishing, tool making, other specialized activities. They engage in trade and exchange networks, facilitating the circulation of goods and ideas among the coasts. The abundance of these resources along the Pacific coast allowed for the establishment of sedentary settlements characterized by permanent or semi-permanent dwellings and villages. These settlements often feature intricate architecture such as large plank houses and totem poles among the indigenous people of this Northwest coast. And as we wrap it all up for that particular part of the chapter in the podcast, we see that the sedentary culture along the North American Pacific coast flourished, especially by harnessing the abundant ocean resources available to them. These cultures developed sustainable economies and intricate social structures. Their reliance on marine resources 
shape their way of life, cultural traditions, and the formation of permanent settlements along the Pacific coast. So now let's move a little bit closer to us and discuss the Cahokia. The Cahokia are located along the Mississippi River from present day St. Louis, was a significant center of the mound, being, mound building cultures of North America. The Cahokia site is one of the most prominent and well studied archaeological sites associated with the Mississippian culture, which flourished from about 800 CE to 1500 CE. Cahokia was a complex and densely populated urban center that emerged as the focal point of the Mississippian civilization. It served as a hub for political, economic, and religious activities, drawing people from surrounding regions to engage in trade, social gathering, and ceremonial events. And the true hallmark of the Cahokia architecture was its large earthen mounds. We often hear much about them still to this day, especially in our region of the South. These mounds were constructed by piling up earth and clay, creating monumental structures that serve various functions. The largest and most impressive hounds at Cahokia is known as Monk's Mound, which stands as one of the largest prehistoric earthworks in North America. It is believed to have served as a ceremony and administrative center, possibly housing the residences of ruling elite. The layout of Cahokia featured a central plaza surrounded by mounds with residential areas and smaller satellite mounds sites extending outwards. The community was organized into a hierarchical social structure and rulers, priests, artisans, and farmers playing distinct roles in the society. The Hokia's prominence in ev is evident from the archaeological remains found at the site, including artifacts, such as pottery, tools, and ceremonial objects, as well as evidence of long-distance trade connections. The influence on Cahokia extended over a vast territory, with evidence of its cultural and economic interactions reaching as far as the Great Lakes regions and the Gulf of Mexico. The decline of the Cahokia and the Mississippian civilization is still the subject of scholar debate, as we've said about many other cultures and civilizations. But factors such as environmental changes, social and political upheaval, warfare, and resources depletion have been proposed as possible causes. By the time European explorers arrived in the region, Cahokia had already been abandoned and its significance had already diminished. Today, Cahokia Mound State Historic Site preserves the remnants of the ancient city and provides insights into the vibrant and complex society that once thrived there. Cahokia served as a significant center of the mound building culture in North America, particularly associated with the Mississippian civilization. And of course, as we have said, the impressive earthen mounds and complex urban layout point to its role as a political, economic, and religious hub. The legacy of Cahokia continues to intrigue researchers and offer valuable insights into the rich cultural history of ancient America. And as we wrap this chapter up, chapter 10 in the podcast, that we can really see so much about the Americas. We know that the earliest recognizable civilization in the Americas emerged in Mesoamerica a region that encompasses present-day Mexico and parts of Central America during the Archaic Period. This Archaic Period in Mesoamerica spans from around 8,000 BCE to 2,000 BCE and is characterized by the development of sedentary settlements, the cultivation of crops, and the emergence of complex cultural traditions. During this Archaic Period, Mesoamerican societies transitioned from a predominantly nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle to a more sedentary way of life. They began to establish permanent or semi-permanent settlements and engage in ag agricultural practices, such as the cultivation of maize, beans, squash, and other domestic plants. This transition to agricultural and sedentary, life, sedentary living laid the foundation for subsequent developments of complex civilizations in Mesoamerica. Mesoamerican civilization of the archaic and formative periods made significant contributions to agricultural trade art, architecture, written systems, and religious practices. Their achievements set the stage for later advanced civilizations that flourished the regions such as the Aztec and the Mayan. It is important to note that while Mesoamerican witnessed the earliest recognizable civilizations in the Americas, there were other cultural developments occurring in the region as well, 
For example, in South America, civilizations such as North Cape Chico and the Chauvin culture emerged during the similar time frames, leaving their own legacies in terms of architecture, societal organization, and cultural expression. And as we see, human migration to the Americas is estimated to have occurred very early, by at least 1500 BC, with the earliest recognizable civilizations emerging in Mesoamerica during that archaic period. The archaic and subsequent formative years witnessed the transition to the sedentary lifestyle, the development of agriculture, the rise of complex cultural traditions, that laid the foundation for later advanced civilizations in Mesoamerica and beyond. Thank you. This podcast episode has been produced under a CC by NCND license. All episodes in this series are made possible through the efforts of Lisa Dominguez, Christopher Gilson, Crescentio Jackson, Ryan Pierce, and Amelia Brister. Thank you for listening.